Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Haley. You have a topic for us today. I do have a topic for us today, and it's been something that I've been exploring um, as part of my own journey, which is, do we give people second chances, or do we believe in second, third, fourth chances? And mm -hmm. this sort of came up because over the last, I mean, especially this year, but over the last month of September, and today is the last day of September 2021, the topic that has been really strong for me has been about having hope in humanity, being pro-human versus all of these other sort of bylines. And, mm -hmm. you know, in that, I question my own thinking around that just to make sure that I'm as aligned as possible. And I was thinking, okay, if you're pro-human, does that mean you endlessly have hope in humans to reach their potential? And I was, my answer there is, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Then it was like, all right, then why do you have boundaries? Well, you have, you have boundaries because you love yourself and you're taking care of yourself. That's not denying them um, a, a second chance. It's basically saying, uh, in, in one example, uh, you've hurt me repeatedly. Uh, you say you've changed. Do I, you know, take you at your word, let you back in and assume that we can keep going? And, uh, you know, that's up to the individual. But, you know, generally, uh, I don't know that the person has to be accepted back in in order for us to affirm that they've changed and to applaud that change. Mm. So I think and I think this is actually what I was talking about last week is boundaries. <laughs> You know, okay. when we set these compassionate boundaries or the way that I view boundaries is that they are for self-love. It's more of a thing of, I can't, like, I deserve to feel better about this and I need to make look after myself first before I even attempt to figure out what's going on over there. So for me, boundaries are first self-love, self-care. And then I also see boundaries as hopefully that little bit of ignition for somebody to question their behavior and open up and maybe ask that question, why doesn't she wanna be around me? Or why has she put this boundary? Um, so I do think boundaries on both sides can be really helpful, not only you know, help me to grow and create that environment that I can flourish, but also to give that person you know, room for growth. What do you think about boundaries and what is your definition of boundaries? Uh, well, I think boundaries are um, are uh, imaginary lines beyond which we won't allow another um, to go or ourselves to be impacted negatively. Um, for instance, uh, learning to say no is very difficult for especially uh, middle children, <laughs> the middle child, you know, who's, who's uh, codependent and wanting to save the world, that learning to say, no, um, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I know that I've, been, I've done it in the past. I just can't right now. Uh, that's a boundary. And it's, it's really, really a hero's journey to, to create them for yourselves, especially if you grew up uh, believing that setting boundaries was selfishness. Mm -hmm. And I think it's hard to stick to them too. And initially, when you first like bring in the concept of boundaries, it's difficult to put them in. But then I think the hard work then begins of being consistent with them and holding the line. Well, I think that you, um, Haley, I think that you can change your boundaries uh, because to reflect the wisdom you've accumulated mm. since you first set them, right? Uh, for instance, you can be in a relationship with somebody uh, who is dealing with alcoholism and your boundary, your tough love boundary is that if you drink, you're gone, right? right. And, and that can be a really healthy boundary. And that may be the most loving thing you can do for the person is no longer be um, 
a codependent, a, an enabler to them. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the day may come where you say, I'm not going to leave you over the drinking issue. You know, I'm not going to ab abandon us over that issue, but I need to have, I need to know that you're working on it. Um, it can't, so I've changed my boundary from one drink and you're out to, all right, I just need to know, is this something that you're hoping to stop? Mm -hmm. And, and then I need, that person can't give me comfort that, per, you know, I, I need to go find that for myself. So in this instance, it would be my job in terms of taking care of myself to go get support from a group, you know, of, of individuals who have been through the same experience. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um, so I've changed, I've changed my boundary, right? Um, maybe because I'm stronger than I, I was. Think, yeah. And I think you mentioned, I think you've now tapped into that wisdom that you can now rely on the wisdom to be the boundary versus that line to be the boundary. Right. Yeah, right. Some in, initially, you know, if we're unpracticed in this, <clears throat> we can overcompensate, I think, our boundaries by setting them too rigidly mm. and too quick and too quickly. Right. All right, you're out you now. Um, uh, or uh, the answer is no and don't ever ask me again. <laughs> because there may be a day when the answer isn't no. Yeah. You know, and, the, and it's, not a, it's not a bad day to regret. It may reflect a day of growth uh, for you and the other person. So we think what we're kind of saying here is that boundaries change as do people change. So just as yeah. much as you put your boundaries in, <clears throat> those then that change of boundaries also sort of again opens up the space for the second chance yes. that person to come in and be like listen i can now work with this let's still have a relationship and i think what's beautiful there is the imperfect nature of it all like when i first started putting in boundaries and you mentioned they can be very rigid and I, that mm -hmm. definitely resonates with me where it's like you come near the boundary and it's like touching an electric fence <laughs> you're going to bounce off it um, and to get to a stage now where they're much softer and I have much more faith in my ability, my ability to trust my intuition is also to communicate in a much more effective way than just being like boundary. <laughs> right. Well, um, there was time, there was a time for your own mental health. Yeah. Sure. That you needed to be, it, it was be either, it, it was either say no strongly or say yes again and regret it. Yeah. Because you were unpracticed. Yeah. And the person may feel like, wow, you know, where'd that come from? But, you know, it was it was your soul saying, you know, Haley, Haley, you know, things are out of control. Yeah. You know, you keep saying yes all the time. You, you keep bringing these toxic people bad. into our lives. <laughs> you know. They're good things. And I think, you know, having that going from that rigid boundary to the, the more agile boundary right. allows for people to come in with that second chance. And, you know, the next question I have there is how many chances before you put in the hard boundary again? Well, that's up to you and you're, there is no um, hard rule about it. If I can give you an example of, uh, what you just said <clears throat> in the catholic church uh people who um are are not as wise as some others despite their rank right will say okay if you're homosexual the church teaches this that's it that's the rule that's the boundary right you can't express yourself sexually or and still be a catholic you know you got to accept one or the other mm -hmm. Pope Francis said, you know, when asked about it, who am I to judge? That's a huge, huge, huge movement of boundaries, which really shook up those who have been so clearly defined. And they were angry at the Pope for changing the boundary they thought was set by Jesus, which it, it had nothing to do with the boundary. Uh, so I think as we get older and wiser, as Francis is from his life experiences, 
and which is, includes having really good friends who are gays, now who am I to judge? So the boundary line has been changed. Right? So, so going to your question about, um, you know, when do you, I think after, after moving your boundary once or twice with a person, that should be a red flag for you, mm. you know, and uh, to say, you know, uh, is this healthy behavior and are you helping the other person at all? Is it healthy for you? Are you being kind to yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? <clears throat> or are you thinking that you have super abilities to handle any problem that comes along? <clears throat> and so you can't say no, or it's an indication that you don't have these super abilities, right? So I can say yes over and over and over again, because I'm super person and I'm unaffected by your toxic behavior. Well, that's not true. No. You, know, you are affected by it. And I think the wisest and strongest thing you can say, being watched by others who don't know, you know, who admire you, but don't know about boundaries very well. Wow. You know, you know, Haley is who, who is so good on all this stuff. She needed to say no. So it's okay for me to say no. Right. And I think that's, you know, don't be the contradiction, which is also my mantra for 2020, 2021 maybe uh -huh. 2022, which is, you know, when we put in these boundaries and we make that, you know, when you step onto the path that is the hero's journey in whichever way that it manifests for so many people, you, I believe that you are making a commitment to yourself to be the best that you can really be and to really walk the talk. Uh -huh. So the power of your word becomes so much more important. Can you personalize this discussion on boundaries in, in terms of giving well, examples? From I think, you know, I, boundaries are a very, they're an everyday thing. I have boundaries that I have instilled on certain behaviors. It's not on people, it's on a certain behavior. Like what? Um, I have boundaries on... Um, if you are like coming to me from an obligation perspective and thinking I need to do things for you because I owe you, I have a boundary on that. If, the, if you're coming to me because I'm out there as somebody that can help other people and you believe it's my duty to help you no matter what, I have a boundary on that. Uh -huh. um, and I have a boundary on you know values if you're not going to be aware and conscious of your word, I have a boundary on that. Uh -huh. And again, you know, most of my boundaries are so that I'm not the contradiction. They help me by, hey, this is what you're teaching other people. How are you be behaving with yourself? How are you treating yourself? So it inspires me to, you know, be stronger but also to be wiser, to be consistently coming into that loop of wisdom, to be able to communicate the boundary in a way that doesn't antagonize or increase the fear that other person is in. Yeah, one example, actually, Ray came home from the dentist um, yesterday and, and told me that they have been sending letters to certain patients that say, uh, and this is new for them, um, perhaps we're not a good fit because <laughs> interesting. they don't like the way the patient has been treating the staff. Wow. Uh, and, you know, we know that that's, uh, you and I talked a little bit before we started recording about <clears throat> the impact of COVID on, you know, people's emotions, mm -hmm. you know, people are more anxious, more depressed. Um, our emotions, and I can speak for myself, are right up there. You know, it doesn't oh, yeah. take much to get an angry response from me, and I'm not an angry person that I'm aware of. Uh, it, airline, you know, people behaving poorly in airline. Okay, so uh, how do you handle that you know, in the personal level? Well, let's say um, that you have friends that uh, when you set a time for come for dinner and cards at 5 and they show up at 5.20, um more than once 
it's a pattern. Okay, so you have the choice there. And, and during that 20 minutes, if they're late, you're going crazy. You're thinking, you know, I would never do that. You know, <laughs> And everything's what? ready for five o'clock, not for everything. Yeah, I didn't plan the menu around your being late. Right? Yeah. You may think you may think being late is fashionable or that's always the way and you've you're done just it. In the flow. <laughs> yeah. And don't be so uptight, you know, yeah. Brian, about this. Why are you so uptight oh. about what we get that? Well, so here's a good example of where um, whether or not it's healthy for you to get as upset as you do when people violate your expectations or don't meet your expectations it's i think it's it's important to set boundaries that work for you right so mm -hmm. how do you set a boundary with people who are perpetually late well one way is just don't invite them anymore you know not in a hostile way just you know hi we haven't seen you in a while yeah i know we've been really busy yeah uh, COVID. <laughs> yeah so uh is that hostile? Uh, it depends on whether you want to have the conversation about arriving late. And if your boundary is, if your if your instincts are saying, "Don't go there," it's not going to. They're going to. You're going to get guilt tripped. You're going to get. You know. Well, why are you that kind of a person that's upset about people being late? Then it becomes about you and not about them. You ever have people do mm -hmm. that to you? Oh, I'm yeah. upset. I'm upset that you, you know, did this. Well, let's talk about why you're upset. <laughs> <laughs> I think they call that gaslighting now. <laughs> Making the person think they're crazy, right? Yeah, gaslighting. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people don't know the source of that term, you know, gaslighting. You know, it's a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where it comes from. It's a, a movie about a husband trying to make his wife crazy by uh, changing things so she doesn't trust her own instincts anymore so you're right i mean it's you know people suddenly it becomes about you which is okay so that your insides uh, are, are ready to explode because you think wait a second you're not taking care of me i you know we're ending up having this be about you know you should continue your bad behavior and i should learn how to accommodate learn to, yes yes so do we do we say, oh, that's the kind of person I want to be. So yeah, come anytime you want. Yeah. Or yeah. do we say, eh, you know, maybe when I get wiser <laughs> and I'm and I care less about it, you know, as I've gotten older, I've cared less about things. You know, when people would, would bring kids for, you know, a long stay and the parents would leave the toys everywhere in our home, you know. Yeah, and, and you've been in our home, so you know everything is neat. Everything has a place. Everything has a place. Yeah, that used to drive me crazy. I used to pick up the stuff, and now I walk right through it. You know, I think I'm not going to allow it to get me upset. And you I know, think that it's not it's, worth it. It's no longer a trigger. Yeah. You know, but I think the boundary is interesting. Um, and I think as we're talking, the more and more I realize it's the power of the word that most of my boundaries are around. Because if you're using the example of sort of that master manipulator that is the gaslighter where, mm -hmm. don't look at me, you're the one with the problem here. You're mm -hmm. the one putting the boundary in. So you need to right. sort this out. Right. You know, that to me is that other person not being aware of how powerful their word is. And that to me is, you know, values is honesty, loyalty, authentic integrity and right there and then it's a mirror for me to be is this how you want to be perceived because we yeah. are a reflection of the people we hang around with we are and we take on uh we take on their characteristics the norms. it becomes a society norm and everybody in that little community now is resonating with the strongest frequency group, yeah group think mm -hmm. no. yeah uh, yeah, so, so when you set your boundary and um, you have protected yourself against behaviors that like people paying you late or not paying mm -hmm. you at all or showing up for these phone conversations 
you know, late or missing them entirely. At what point do you say, you know, enough is enough? Because I have other people out there who would, you know, be, behave better right. and not waste, not waste my time. Well, after you set that boundary and stop this person from impacting you negatively, you have the time now to think about whether that is the person you want to be, right? It's pretty hard to do while it's happening for me. It, it's, right. It's hard for me in the moment to say, I don't want to be the kind of person that gets upset about, you know, you doing whatever, but I am the kind of person that gets upset about you doing whatever. And until I choose to change, you know, that's who I am. And my boundaries really need to reflect who I am, not who I want to be. Which is in a very interesting sort of segue into the sake of chances and potential. Mm -hmm. And I found that, you know, the, what I mentioned earlier is that I am an endless romance, romantic person with humanity. I have like infinite hope in humanity. And even I, I will give everybody a chance. And I will take that opportunity to try and speak to them and try and create a connection, regardless of whether it's a five second connection or it's a you know, two week connection, it doesn't matter. But I also realize that in that minute that I'm connecting with them, I'm also seeing their potential. I'm seeing what they are now and I can see what they can become. So when you put those boundaries in, you know, as somebody that puts the boundaries in, because of the way that they are behaving now, it makes it really confusing. And I think a little bit heartbreaking that you can see the potential of somebody, you can see them there, and sometimes mm -hmm. they might display those qualities, but really right now they're not there. Right. And, and so what do you do? Present. So what do you do? I put the boundaries in. Um, yeah. I, I know that that is my way of seeing things. I immediately like get super excited about all these beautiful things that are open to people. And I have to really rein myself back in and be like, that's great, but you're in September 30th, 2021. This is the person you're looking at right now. Can, are they that person right now? So, mm -hmm. you know, that's where I kind of open up to the second chances. I will put a boundary in and... I will not question it. The boundary will always go in. But how long that boundary is there, I will always give people that chance to come back in and show me that now we're ready to have a longer connection. And, and I think for a lot of us, Haley, uh, this starts with family, mm. you know, siblings, uh, parents uh, that we we don't sit easily with right you know we we don't love our time with them for whatever reason and so we can set a boundary which is healthy to say you know i'm not going to put myself in a position in which my buttons get pushed right. now that's not that's not putting it on you that's not saying you push my buttons it's saying my buttons get pushed and I'm not going to put myself in a position to have that happen because I don't like the me that is manifested. Right. I don't like I don't like myself in those situations. So I'm going to set a boundary. So I'm going to say, you know, I'm not going to consciously establish communication with you, except through a safe medium like email. And I'm going to keep my words really neutral. I'm going to make sure that I don't interfere with your life or do anything that's going to push your boundaries, push your button. And uh, and then with time, you can change. Mm -hmm. Feel, oh Lord, you know I'm 73, and you know how long is my sister going to live? And do I really want to, or my brother or my whoever, do I really want to maintain this? Um, encampment to protect myself from their wackiness and are they wacky anymore maybe they're you know they've mm -hmm. had 15 years to get you know improved they're not they're not the same person they were right so you can give a second chance but i don't think you should open up all the doors and windows 
you know? Right. I say, come on in and live with me. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you do is say, you know, we'd like, we'd like to talk on it? the phone. Would you like to talk on the phone? Right. Yeah. And then if the phone call gets stressful, you say, oh, I'm sorry, there's somebody at the door. Boundaries <laughs> back. Talk to you later. <laughs> love, love you. Bye-bye. Right. Mean it. <laughs> And I think, you know, that is, you, you know, people on both sides need to be able to show that they've changed, that something has changed in the dynamic to remove that charge or lessen that charge enough where there's now more of a balanced communication. And sometimes in the, in the interim, in the time that passes, you meet other people who help you take a look at yeah. yourself uh, and think, oh, hmm, I, I, you know what? I don't think I need to be as harsh with my sister or my brother as I thought I, as I was, um, because, you know, I was with this person, I was able to do it. So maybe I'm able to do it with, with them or, or not. I mean, it, in, uh, we can have a, an idea of the person we want to be, right? And we can fake it till we make it. Uh, but we need to be aware that while we're faking it, people are going to push our buttons yeah. if those if those buttons are still there, right? And I think, you know, with that second chance of like, you know, people changing and I've changed. So I do believe that people can change for the long term because I've done it. <laughs> Um, and I'm doing it every day. I'm doing it to make sure that that change is sustainable. It is a transformation. And I, you know, when we look at where we are in today's world with cancel culture and this whole woke thing and people being tarred and feathered for comments or things that they did five, 10, 20 years ago, it's, you know, it's an interesting thing to look at second chances and to see where we are with second chances. Does everybody get a second chance? Well, it's up, it's up to us. I mean, let, let's, let me give you an example of, uh, from the current uh, civil, uncivil war that we're in. <laughs> so, the non-civil you know, civil war. The uncivil war, yeah. I, I, uh, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. You know, when I walk into a supermarket, um, I say hello to anybody who I make eye contact with, from the person stocking the shelves to the person, you know, who's standing in front of the meat that I'm interested in buying. If today, if they had a t-shirt on that said impeach Biden, or they had a face mask on that said Trump, right, I have a boundary about that. I, 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 that does not mean that if that person and I were stuck on an elevator for five hours, that I couldn't find lots of common ground with them. Mm -hmm. Family, background, beliefs, values, whatever. Uh, especially if we agreed not to talk politics. But that t-shirt or that face mask is saying, for the time that I'm in this store, that's who I am. I'm making a statement. I'm making a statement and I want to make you uncomfortable. I'm doing this to make you uncomfortable right. and to affirm, you know, my politics. Well, you know, you may, uh, you and I may have different reactions, Haley. But my reaction is to, to take care of myself is to, avoid the person, um, avoid eye contact, avoid, you know, proximity to the person, let give them plenty of space, and then move on. Now, there was a time where I would need affirmation from somebody else, like another shopper, mm. or another uh, a, a checkout person, you know, by saying, did you see that person? Did you see that? Can you believe they wore that t-shirt? Can you, I don't need to do that anymore. You know, you can, you can have your reactions to them. I'll have mine. And mine is that I'm, I'm cutting them wide berth. Do I give them a second chance? 
Well, they haven't asked for it. Um, but if I see them in the store again and they don't have the t-shirt on or the mask on, um, I'm gonna treat, I'll say, hey, how you doing? Now that's a second chance, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> you reminded me when you said benefit of doubt, I, um, the therapist that helped me tremendously um, a couple years ago was we were talking about the benefit of the doubt and she believed that if you have to give somebody the benefit of the doubt, you need to check yourself. It means that you're not listening to your intuition. It means what, that you're having, more about that. you're more. having to doubt your intuition mm. to give that person a chance to show you that there's something different. Mm -hmm. And it's, hey, it's interesting. Haley, it's an interesting perspective. Uh, Haley, the, I don't disagree with that. I think that's um, wise. But it may also be uh, that it's your ego that uh, yeah. doubts them. It's your ego that's been hurt by them and doubts them. And so giving them the benefit of the doubt is saying, for me, I don't really trust my ego response to you right now because I'm hurt, I'm threatened, I'm whatever. You don't say that out loud, obviously, because then you you never finish your shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Just get home delivery. Yeah, uh, but uh, I think you can give people the benefit of the doubt, and then as soon as they disappoint, then you pull back. I think you raise a very good point there. There's a difference between doubting your intuition and doubting your ego. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, one of the easy ways for me to check whether I'm in my intuition or whether I'm in my ego and where that benefit of the doubt is sitting. If I'm looking at somebody and jumping to stereotypes or labels, that's 100% ego. Uh -huh. That's when I will give them the benefit of the doubt and be like, I need to calm down. This is a yeah. me putting this person in that thing because I'm assuming. When it's coming from intuition, it's more along that feeling of, I know what this person is about. I know that they, and they've shown me that they um, have the strong inclin inclination to be this kind of person. Mm -hmm. That's when, you know, benefit of the doubt, I think changes to the boundary and to the, nah, dude, you need a second chance. <laughs> yeah, and you can see them, you know, it, it doesn't mean that that's going to be the way it is forever. Right. And, and I don't think you even need to talk it out unless they ask you about it. I don't think, and you know, that's an interesting thing about boundaries. I, I don't think that they can be explained. Well, I think anybody who um, reads my Facebook posts has an idea of who I am because I speak honestly from the heart. Uh, and so uh, if they trust that I'm a good person, they may give me the benefit of the doubt if I write something that pinches them, mm. right? So if we see a pattern of good behavior and we encounter something that pinches, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't, even we're shocked that the person said it. We can give them the benefit of the doubt that it was a bad day, right. that they're, they don't feel well. Um, if they had the opportunity, they'd say it differently. And that's when we can message the person privately and say, did you really mean to say it this way? This is how it impacts me. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> Do you think that there are any behaviors that warrant a never going to speak to you again? Uh, well, I don't know if we never going to speak. I don't know, Haley. I, I, you know, I had a priest friend who's died, but he was in prison for, and you know, charged with sexually molesting children, which um, I personally don't believe he did. Although I, I, I believe that he was inappropriate in counseling situations with older people, but. Uh, uh, he's people would say, well, why would you do this? He's a pedophile. 
And I, in my mind, I said, well, whether he is or not, he's my friend. Mm. Right. So do we not, you know, Jesus talked about visiting the, the imprisoned as a corporal work of mercy. Do we not, do we, do we quit talking to people who are sent to prison for a particular thing they did? Are they beyond re, re, rehabilitation? Are they beyond growth? No, you know. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I have the same sort of sentiment that there's always like, again, this endless hope in humanity. And I think, you know, when Jesus was speaking about like visit the imprisoned, he wasn't talking about just the people that are in prison. It's those that are imprisoned by their fears, by their, you know, grief, difficult people, you know, being open to visiting with them and being open to, you know, having a conversation always and show me show me what you need and i'll let you know if i can support that or not right but the the, the challenge for people like you and me is to not go to and go into it thinking we're going to rescue them and, and yeah that we're going to change of people, that's a very slippery slope and a lot of people are like i can see that they're really you know not in a great place but i think i can i i'll be the one to get them straight Right. I'm silver tongued. You yeah. know, I, I can say it in a way no other person has ever said you it. have a special connection. <laughs> and they're going to say, oh, my God, I can't believe you said it in a way that no one said it before. And I'm a changed person. Right. You know? <laughs> uh, and that's our hope. But uh, I think it's um, grandiose and and uh, and it's not being kind to ourselves. I don't think so. And I think we all do it, especially in relationships. Yeah. We're all, yeah. when somebody gives us attention and we're like in the little game now in that slipstream, it's like, oh, I'll be the one to change them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what do we know? Uh, we know people change when they want to change. They change when they want to change. When the time is right for them. them. Not because we want them to or not because we've convinced them intellectually that that's the right way to go because they're dealing with their feelings, their ego uh, too. I mean, and all the issues of their life bring them to where they are. And a chance encounter with you may make a difference and it can make a difference. You know, I, I uh, one of the things I do daily and it's not always an easy thing, but I wish happy birthday to everybody who Facebook tells me is celebrating a birthday that day. And uh, occasionally I'll get a message from somebody who said, you know, you made my whole week. I thought about what you said all week. Cause I don't just say happy birthday. You now uh, I say, thank you for the abundant goodness in your heart and in your life. And, you know, this person said, I, I thought, I thought about it all week. Well, there are times in which we have the joy of making a difference in a person's perception of themselves in a positive way, but we can't live as if that's going to happen and that's our life goal. Right. And I our, think it happens when we're not even aware of it. <laughs> it does. You know? So many people, and you know, my journey too, and so many people that have interacted with me, they can pick out things that I said, and I don't even remember I said them. And I'm like, yeah. okay, <laughs> well done me. <laughs> I mean, it's the yeah. same thing. Like I remember certain things that people said to me and they don't remember. Uh -huh. It's these wonderful, sweet moments. Um, I wanted to add too that, you know, part of being on the hero's journey and going through the hard difficulty of staying on the path and not choosing to either stop or change path is the wonderful compassion that comes with when you see people that are in similar hard times and it's being able to i think that's one of the, you know i don't consider there were hard parts and there have been hard parts i'm sure there'll be more hard parts on my journey i don't look back at them and be like holy shit like that can never happen again. I see it as uh -huh. 
that was hard, but my goodness, did it give me some skills? Did it give me that maturity and that wisdom to be able to sit with other people and be like, I can see you're shouting. I can mm -hmm. see you're angry. I'm not going to hold it against you. I'm sure there's a thousand things going on right now that makes it really difficult. But here's the and, <laughs> and it's not about you. Yeah. It's not about you, Haley. It's about them. And, but, you know, but you can also say, there. yeah, you can also say, look, I'm, mm -hmm. I know you're feeling really angry, but we've spent the entire hour <laughs> with you being round angry. And yeah. And I'm not, I don't know what good I've done you. Um, but still, you know, the payment is. <laughs> On your hero's journey, Brian, do you give yeah. equal weight to the hard and the beautiful things? Or do you weight, how do you, how do you weight that on your journey? Uh, well, I think the hardest, you know, the hardest things are the ones that I remember. I don't know if that's true for everybody, uh, but the, the challenges in my life are the ones that I often remember. Now that doesn't mean that I don't remember peak experiences. I don't know that they, you know, that expression peak experiences, mm -hmm. they used to, they used to use it a lot and I loved it, but you know, uh, a peak experience is this is amazing right. uh, connection. And, uh, and I remember those uh, seeing a tree uh, in a luminescent way and thinking, oh my God, I've never, I've never been aware that, of that. I've never, and it may not happen again, mm -hmm. but, but because you've had it experienced it once, it sort of impacts your view of reality, right? Uh, the negative ones, uh, uh, it's not like I want to be hurt. I, I don't want to have pain. I much prefer <laughs> being happy. But, uh, but I do know that if I get through it, um, I'm going to be stronger mm -hmm. and a, um, a, a more valuable guide, right? Yeah. If you're I looking for, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I think I weight them same but different, if that makes sense. <laughs> you, you weight know, them the same? The same but differently. So they have the same, I value them the same but my perception of them is a little bit different. Like the peaks to me are the sweet spots, the inspiration, the this is so worth it. The tougher times are grittier, but they always end in something beautiful. They always, you know, and I think it is that cycle. It's like when you come down and you're on your way back up, you get through the hard stuff, you climb to the top and then you get up there and the view is amazing. And yeah. then you keep on walking and you have to change mountains. So you have to go down and back up. Yeah. So and suddenly the weight is the same. The beauty of both of them is the same. It's just, I guess, the experience is different. Uh, you know, I was, uh, two thoughts. One is uh, this morning I was uh, looking at my hands um, as I was putting on some cream and, and I've seen in many situations, uh, you know, in dramas where people will look at the hands and say, well, you haven't really done any manual labor, right? Right. You've had a kind of a soft life. Um, I think that if you're looking for a sage, uh, their soul should be a little calloused. <laughs> That's a really great way of saying it. Because uh there's wisdom that comes from those calloused mm -hmm. hands and wisdom that comes from that calloused soul you know how did you get through it how did you withstand it uh how, you know do you have any regrets about the way you handled it so that's uh i love that well yeah. done great way like, of seeing it i like it yeah i like that too Sometimes you don't have a choice. I mean, you talked about going down the mountain and then going back up. Often, you know, these things happen in life and they knock you down the bottom. You do. Bottom. The strong you wind comes walk. and you're tumbling down. <laughs> yeah, you're not walking down. You're, you're you know, you're, you're tumbling. Yeah. And you, you hit the bottom hard. And you cry, you know. And it hurts and you want comfort. And why did this happen to me? I'm a good person. And but because you've 
because you've seen good and joy and beauty, and because of the you've overcome difficulty in the past, you know to get up. You know, you it's okay to it's okay to now go take a nap. It's mm -hmm. okay to have your cup of tea or whatever it takes to to calm you. Do whatever you need to do, but. Um, you know, you'll get through this because you've done it before. Right. You know, a friend of mine, or, you know, one of my um, closest friends who, uh, you know, I dated in college and came out as gay and she ended up marrying my uh, fraternity brother who was ended up coming out as gay. <laughs> um, the trials that I went through enabled me to be of optimum assistance to her when she called and told me what happened because I had already been through it. Mm. And I had already talked to hundreds of gay people about their lives by the time. So I, so I was able to give wife, wise counsel, you know, what was going on, what she, she could, she could expect, you know? Uh, I, so the calloused soul. <laughs> I really love that. I think that not, not hardened, not hard it's just, it's just it's got some and i think that speaks very much to like scars and you know wrinkles which are the scars of yeah. uh -huh. like experience is they tell such a wonderful story and it all means something the one of the things about living here in the yucatan is that the elders have these very dark like deep but plump wrinkles it's very interesting, but their face is so full of character and it just, you look at them and you're just like wisdom, <laughs> mm -hmm. sage, you know, like you've seen a lot and you've experienced a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, the callous soul. I love that. Now, just because your soul is callous doesn't mean it's wise. Uh, you know, just because your hands are callous doesn't mean that you've done, you know, good work. Uh, so we, you know, we have doing to, the same work day in, day out. Yeah. Yeah. So we, but it, but it is an indication, you know, I was thinking, oh, the, I was, I had two things I wanted to see. The second one was, you know, in the life of Jesus, we really don't get, uh, any story of him facing difficulty until the last week of his life, you know, and, and when that happened, he said, you know, take this cup from me if you can. <laughs> he, he didn't, you know, he was riding on a donkey with thousands of people saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, laying palms down in front of the, you know, on Sunday. And then five days later, he's on the cross. <laughs> what in the hell happened this week? <laughs> but <That's> bad week. <laughs> <laughs> bad week. But, but I think that is the, you know, it is the hero's journey is that, oh, it is, you know, you are one minute like cloud nine and everything is fantastic. And then the next minute you're going like, wait, what just yeah. happened? Like I was great. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a little like retirement. You know? <laughs> There's a period in which, you know, it's my goodness, you're fabulous. And then, you know, shortly thereafter is, I'm sorry, what did you do? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? The humility of the hero's journey. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> it's it, 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 humility. I, if I can tell you a personal story, um, the Stonewall Museum that I've been really involved with, it's how are we doing on time? Do we have any time? We're good. We're tight. We've got 10 minutes. Okay. So it just sent me a, a, a new. Um, sites that they've created with timelines about the presence of LGBTQ people in the arts, in sports, in business. And, you know, I went through them and I couldn't, I, I wasn't anywhere. <laughs> I wasn't listed as an important event or person anywhere despite 47 years, you know, of being a pioneer in many areas. And I thought, do you say something or do you not say something? Um, so I wrote back and I said, you know, this is really cool. 
uh, please give high fives to whoever created it. But I, but I need to acknowledge a little disappointment that at least in the area of business that you didn't acknowledge that I started, you know, the diversity trainings and corporations on gay issues. And, uh, and that was hard to do. Yeah, that's a hard so one. I said, oh. I said it's, an, it's an odious task to ask for recognition of things you have done. Um, I think it's needed, though. Yeah, and you want somebody else to do it. You know, Ray, you would you write that? Else, but really, I think on the hero's journey, it's having the courage to say, recognize that, recognize my path. Yeah, I mean, and but I also said I was really disappointed that they had uh, no timeline for religion. You know, there's been incredible. You would incredible think that would be the first one. There have been incredible sacrifices made by people in their denominations to to denied ordination, you know, that they studied and studied for and their heart was set on it. And then because they came out, they were denied the one thing in their life they wanted. And then to have their own community never acknowledge that there's a story there. It's uh, the same thing, right? It is, it is. It's uh it's wrong and it's painful. But, you know, you and I have talked about, are we called to embrace obscurity? You know, is, you know, is my last, is my last task on this journey embracing obscurity that I'm going to be forgotten? Or that the your, Go ahead. Or is your last one of your last tasks being a pioneer in saying you know honor the path honor the journey honor the person that you know walks that journey which opened the doors for so many people i think the obscurity is not how many people and how many doors that you're opened that's the obs obscurity i think having the courage to say that had you not done this where would we be today and yeah. anybody who knows you would be able to be like oh your contribution was big enough that people would stop to think about that. Mm -hmm. And I think part of maybe that's the next step is being able to say, you know, this isn't me being an egotistical narcissist. This is me saying I honor other people's paths and in doing so I honor my path. Mm -hmm. Well, that goes back to around, you know, going around Robin to our thing about boundaries. You know, one boundary we may set for ourselves is that we don't, you know, we don't allow ourselves to be ignored. Right. Like um, <laughs> you know, yeah. Especially if you feel that the work you've done has been, you know, that you've been an instrument for something bigger. But, you know, I don't really have a comfortable position on this that because I, you know, part of me that they're part of me that is just suffering right now thinking about having written that email asking for attention. You know, do I need their attention? No. If they if they had included me, would that make my life better? No. No, but I mean, it's still it's. I think that might be the next level of work is to be able to, you know, walk the talk. If we're going to sit here and tell people, you know, be proud of your work, know that you're making an impact. We can't sit there and be like, but ignore me. Mm. You know, that's a contradiction. I think. Um, yeah. I had an experience this week, which was incredible. One of my lovely clients wrote a paper. She's in college and she wrote a paper about me and the impact I've had in her life. Oh, and nice. we've known each other for almost a year. And, you know, she sent me a message saying, hey, I'm writing a paper about you. What should I call you? My gut was, why would you ever write a paper about me? Like, no. <laughs> but I settled into it and I was like, this is what, who I am. You can call me this. And so she mm -hmm. finished the paper. She read it to me and I was crying, but mm -hmm. it was an interesting, you know, being able to let go of that. Oh, I can't look like I'm enjoying this or I'm getting something out of it because that's an ego narcissist. Mm -hmm. And my head is getting too big for, and my, too big for my boots. <laughs> Somebody's mm -hmm. going to come and knock me down into that space of 
shit, man, I'm actually doing something here. Like Mm -hmm. all of that work, all of those decisions, all of those hard boundaries, look what it's manifested into. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, very important, I think, to be able to sit there and not only do it quietly with humility, but also be able to speak about how proud you are of yourself. Yeah, it's, it's nevertheless difficult. I mean, <laughs> it's it, it, difficult, but maybe, you know, you and I should try it. <laughs> but, well, you know, uh, uh, it, and I've, I've, I've had tons of praise and expressions of gratitude. I have not been shortchanged by that in my life. So this was not a experience of, okay, one more time. Right. Um, this is different. Uh, nevertheless, if this is what, you know, you're presenting, it's not really that accurate, you know. It's not that complete. And you said this was complete. That's how you sold it, you know. Um, And, but it is so hard to ask for recognition. You know, you- Also sharing your wisdom too, and being able to say that there's actually a more accurate version of this. uh Uh-huh. That includes me. (laughs) By the way, you spell my name (laughs) B-R-I-A-N. Yeah, not brain. <laughs> I get brain all the time. B-R-A-I-N, dear brain. No, he's my twin brother. <laughs> he's very nice. But that's There's a whole <laughs> more to this whole thing than just the brain. <laughs> well, I think that's going to be my um, inspiration for maybe October is to really find the courage to allow my wisdom to get the recognition. And let myself to get the recognition for my path. How will you do that? I'm not going to do it silently. I'm actually going to speak it. I'm going to use, and I think also for October, what's becoming abundantly clear is the power of the word. And maybe we can talk about this next time, you know, the how important our word is and what our word is made up of that makes it so powerful and so unique. How important is it to tell the truth? About ourselves? About anything. Uh Uh-huh. You know, about anything and everything. I'll write that down so I don't forget. Yes. And right now, you know, at least in the U.S., that what is truth? You have these millions of people who are who believe or say they believe that the election, you know, was stolen, that that is just not true. And how they say it is and how newscasters or commentators will say it over and over. And we live in a time in which no one would have tolerated that years ago, you know, that people would have called them on it, uh, that you're, you know, you're you're lying. it's yeah boundaries second boundaries. <laughs> all right my lovely brian i okay, so hey, enjoyed hey. our time together today thank me, you thank you me too and we'll me see too. each other next thursday yes we will thank love you, love you bye love, love you bye-bye